Okay, so in this video, I want to cover how I vapor blasted this part. I blasted it in a two-step process. The first pass was a coarser media to get rid of the corrosion quickly and all the other junk that was on here. And then with another pass, which was a fine media, to bring it into a nice polished look. All right, so in case you missed it, a couple weeks ago, I came out with plans on how to build a vapor blaster. I dumped 1300 bucks into my Harbor Freight cabinet and converted it into what you see here and what is going to be vapor blasting that part. So I've been getting a lot of questions on this whole system here and I've been taking notes of it and what I'm going to do is come out with the FAQ video. So if you have any questions, comment below. I'll add that to the video and hopefully answer all those questions. Also, I've been working on a parts list to bring the cost down. And this thing is loaded with a lot of features like the wiper, the spray wash, um, the control box. If you don't need all that, it drastically reduces the cost of building one of these. So I'm gonna come out with a video, it's gonna be called Bare Bones Vapor Blaster Cost or whatever. And that is just the basic stuff to get you vapor blasting. And maybe that's gonna appeal to some of you guys. Okay, so let's discuss what's going on with this part as it stands right now. First off, this covers off a CB550 uh, mid-70s, so that covers over 40 years old. So with a cover that is 40 years old, you're going to see a bunch of stuff uh, <laughs> that could be wrong with it. Let's start off by saying uh, the reason I deemed this cover junk is because some hack got a little carried away in this area and tried to remove a strip fastener. So he kind of damaged this area and I didn't really feel like cleaning it up. Now you could probably go in here with a Dremel and buzz this down and then sand it and get it smoothed out some and then finally vapor blast it and it'd probably look uh, pretty good. I might do that. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, there's some damage here so I just got a new one. Uh, another thing is um, over the years you're going to find all kinds of people are going to work on these bikes and this guy seemed to get silicone everywhere but the mating surfaces that seal. I mean there was blue silicone all over the freaking place on the engine cases, on the covers. The guy was pretty sloppy. But one thing I want to point out is that the uh, vapor blaster does not do a good job of removing silicone. So it is important to clean all this off prior to blasting. Uh, the seals, it doesn't seem to damage it, but you're probably going to want to remove these anyway. I mean, anytime you're doing a rebuild, remove the seals, blast the part, then install new stuff. Um, but I left them in there just to demo. Now, back in the demo video, you saw me duct tape off this area right here, and I was blasting it, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but the blasting went pretty slow. The cleaning went pretty slow. And the reason is you're going to get stuff like this. This black stuff is oxidation and it is very difficult to remove. It is very hard stuff. Okay, so the reason it was slow, number one, I was using my small blast gun. Small air jet, small nozzle. Obviously, the cleaning process is going to be slower. I have since then installed the bigger gun just because I'm impatient and I like to see faster results. I'm consuming more air, but you know what? I like the cleaning power of the bigger gun. Another reason it was slow is here, this this guy, this portion here, this little square and this here it was all fine mesh glass bead only. And that is a media used for finishing and polishing. That's really should be done as a final pass, okay? All this here, you can see it's a lot duller, but what I did is I sprinkled in some fine mesh aluminum oxide, okay? Aluminum oxide is very irregular and sharp. It has sharp edges and it cuts like crazy, okay? So it has a lot of cutting action well, where the glass beads are round and spherical and they, they polish and peen the surface. So if I have a mix of glass bead and aluminum oxide, I get cutting action and I get po polishing action. And um, what's nice about the vapor blaster and the pump is it agitates it in, into a uniform slurry mixture and you can 
blast with a mix and get the desired results. So what I was after is I was just after a faster cleaning process and what I'll do is I'll change the media out and then go back and polish it with just glass beads. Okay. Also there's some factory clear coat which is a pain to remove so this, this removed it no problem. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to clean all the, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the silicone off. There's a little duct tape residue on here from me taping it up and you know the, the media does not like that as well. I'm going to remove the seals and we're going to blast the rest of this and clean it up with the glass bead aluminum oxide mix. And then what I'll probably do is tape half of it off and hit it with just glass bead and we'll see the the two-step process used to get this part looking brand new again. Okay, so first pass with the coarse media, I blasted it inside and out, and you know it was relatively low pressure and it cleaned up very quickly. And you'll notice that it has a dull matte finish, and that's because we were using a coarser abrasive, if you will. So the second pass will be a smoothing, polishing, more finer grit, if you will and it'll bring some shine in um, but to some people this may be an acceptable finish and it's the look they're after and that's fine then you can get that really quick now this part I spent eight minutes blasting it and I think I spent a little too much area time in some areas uh, noticeably these pits here just to make sure it gets deep in there. And again, you know, probably could do it a little quicker, but eight minutes isn't bad considering what you get. I mean, you completely clean apart inside and out. Okay, so here's as close as I can get with my camera. And you'll notice that there's different sheens here and that's because I had it all taped up and I blasted it at different times. So we're gonna have to address that when uh, we blast it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape off this half so we can leave it as is and then we'll work with the fine mesh glass bead and polish on this side only just so we can get a difference when we peel the tape off. Oh and changing media is pretty easy. I got a series of ball valves to get rid of the water and the media.
Alrighty, so here's the finished part. Again, on the right half here is the fine mesh glass bead final pass. Here is the aluminum oxide glass bead mix. And you can see that's really shiny. Looks really nice, it is super smooth. So you're probably asking why, why do two passes? given that you have to change the media, which takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, say you had 10 parts to do. I think it would be faster if you did a rough cut, change the media out, and then did a final pass. Obviously, if you're just dealing with one part, you can just suffer through with the fine media and get these results. Also, I did this. This was with the uh, course mix and it cleaned up the gasket surface really nice and also in here um, but really this is this is the finish that's really nice mm -hmm.